I'm working with a project team that plans to use a concept called a minimum business increment in their Agile backlog. The term MBI has been used liberally and inconsistently by team members. There were workshops called MBI meetings, but few people knew what that meant. So the resulting features and stories went into a backlog that was roughly organized into releases instead of MBIs. But an unavoidable project delay gave us the opportunity to step back and restructure the backlog. Doing so means figuring out this MBI thing and applying it intelligently to the huge pile of accumulated features and stories. First, how is an MBI different from a theme, an epic, a minimum viable product, a minimum viable feature, or a walking skeleton? Is anyone besides me befuddled by the plethora of similar sounding terminology? Some definitions might help. Theme, a group of user stories that have a common attribute. A theme can be centered around enabling a specific user group or creating a new module or capability. Epic. An epic is a large story that cannot be created in one sprint. It should, like a user story, describe one thing, but should be broken down into smaller user stories for sprint planning purposes. MVP. A version of a new product with just enough features to validate the approach and gather feedback from early adopters for further product design. MVF. Minimum viable feature applies to adding functionality to an MVP, but still going with the as skinny as possible approach. It's used to test user adoption of new product features. Walking skeleton, a tiny implementation of the system that performs an end-to-end -end function. It's used to link and test the architectural components. According to my internet search, an MBI is the minimal amount of functionality that will bring value to the business. That sounds similar to an MVF, but the focus on business value is powerful. It's a focus that we easily lose sight of when we're in the depths of elaborating and grooming user stories, especially on our project, which has a heavy emphasis on technical architecture improvement. Our team went back to a list of MBIs that had been developed early in the project. We eliminated the ones that had already been delivered, assigned to other teams, or de-scoped. We wrote the name of each remaining MBI on a whiteboard. Then we wrote the names of all the features that were already in the backlog on sticky notes and arranged them under the correct MBI. We discovered a few gaps. There were MBIs without features. There were features without MBIs. There were features which were far too large and features that were really user stories that should be subordinate to other features. We used sticky notes in a contrasting color to draft the missing features and added them to the board. When we were done with this exercise, we saw that our backlog was only about two-thirds complete. Our attempts to organize our backlog into minimal requirements might appear to have drastically increased our scope, but we didn't really change the scope. We just found the holes in the documented requirements that would have kicked our tails later in the project. Also, by grouping the features into MBIs, we created the opportunity to have real conversations about business priority and to plan our work more intelligently. Before applying MBIs to the backlog, it was not uncommon for feature teams doing sprint planning to just grab whatever story was ready for development. This created significant pain for the testing team. It also made it very difficult for management to see and report status. The good news is that restructuring our backlog allowed us to identify the two top priority MBIs. Now we can focus on elaborating, grooming, sizing, and developing the stories to deliver these MBIs to the business faster.